Pastor Sharo here. If you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Pastor Sharo and this is The Preacher Girl TV, where every week on Wednesday, you get a brand new video blog with something that's going to help you live a better, richer, happier Christian life. If you are a regular Preacher Girl, welcome back. You're going to love what we're doing today. It is now 8.45 p.m. and I'm here recording this podcast um, after a very, very long day. And it's because what I'm about to share with you is something I used to do and just very recently because of a million things fell out of the habit of. Are you stressed out? Are you harried? Does it feel like everything is getting away from you? You can't get your house clean. You can't get your commitments met. Things that you wanted to do, you end up not doing. At the end of the day, you're thinking, what did I do? Well, if you are any of those things, then chances are you did not plan your week properly. So today, I want to teach you and talk to you about how to plan your week and change your life. So... I'm usually a very organized person. I try to be. I love a clean house. My house was always so clean when I was growing up. My mom just is one of those people that keeps everything in order and she cleans the house every single day. So I grew up that way, but recently over the last few weeks, everything fell apart. My very neatly organized closet just looks like a bomb went off in there. I usually get up very early in the morning to do my Bible study, my devotions, drink a cup of coffee, and then at eight o'clock, I go work out for an hour or 40 minutes. Then I come home, get dressed, come to work, and and you know, and, and then during the day, I have my day organized the way it should be, and so I get what I need to get done, done. But because I've had a lot of travel, COVID, things changed my parents were here visiting family was here for an entire my entire family was here for an entire week so my schedule just went haywire and my planning went out the window now when things like that happen when emergencies happen when you are a traveling person you can't always schedule every minute of your life but I have found in my life a schedule or plan makes the hugest difference because you end up at the end of every day feeling like and knowing that you've accomplished the major things. So I'm going to give you four quick and easy ideas, tips that I have used forever to make sure that the important stuff gets done, doesn't get dropped by the way, and that at the end of the day, you don't feel like you've pulled in a million directions and getting nothing done. So these are practical steps. This is not the psychological reasons behind your mess. People want to tell you, well, it's your childhood coming up and it's none of of that stuff. All it is is four easy ways right now to make sure you can get your life back into an organized space. I don't know about you, but when I wake up in the morning to a clean kitchen or a, a neat room, I feel better. I feel like I could study more if I'm, even if I'm doing my makeup in my closet and stuff is everywhere, I'm so stressed out about getting it clean that I'm not happy about it. So, you know, I believe that a house should look lived in and that I don't like museums for houses, but in the same, same vein, I want my surroundings to be neat and I get a little bit antsy when it's not. So if you're like me, you're going to enjoy this podcast. So the first thing I need you to do is get a big old notebook any kind of notebook that you like. I myself, I love blank pages. Are you, I I mean, is anybody like me? Am I crazy? Am I freaky for being like that? I love blank pages like sketch pads and unlined pages like this. My favorite, I love it. Some of you know that, that's why you give me these books as gifts, but I love, and and these are super great because they're thick pages, they're like, you know, they're for drawing and painting and so they're perforated so you can tear it up love this book i just love this book and um wait let me see what book is this oh it's a mixed media book no wonder it's a sketch pad where you can paint and do watercolor and and that's why it's so thick but this is such a joy to write in in fact i want to give one of these away at the end of the the podcast you'll be able to enter in for the drawing for one of these and you'll figure out why i love these okay so First thing you do is you need a book or an iPad or a phone. So you pick your um, calendar tool, whatever it is that 
you you think best with for some of you it's your cell phone and you can do your calendars and for some of you it's your ipad and you have a program or an app that you can simply use reminders or whatever and for some of us it's a book and we have to see it on paper in order to feel like you know this is this is in stone i want to just stress for you first of all um before you you use this tool is that you have to plan when we were younger, they used to tell us, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Remember that? I, I realized it's true. And that doesn't mean we're not impulsive or sometimes we don't do things off the cuff. Of course we do. We make time for those things as well though. But the most successful people in the whole wide world, the ones who get the job done are the ones who economically distribute their time so that the important things get the most time and that the things that you say you were going to do get done and you're not always down to the wire stressing yourself out so i found that the easiest way to do this is for the week to make a weekly plan i usually do this on a saturday evening after i'm done preparing my sermon for sunday morning i plan for the rest of the week and it really helps me. Sometimes I don't stick to it exactly, especially when I'm in the office and people come in to chat and stuff like that. But for the most part, I know where that chunk of time has to go and what I'm supposed to be getting done in that time and I try to get it done. All right, so the first thing you wanna do after you get your book is something I, I taught the people in the Write Your Book in 30 Days group, which is do a mind dump right and you remember what that is so a mind dump is when you just it's exactly what it sounds like you just dump <laughs> whatever it is in your mind that you have to get done must go on paper or it must be written down in your memos or you you just write it down write it down whatever it is so for instance uh, mine would look like this I've got a sermon to prepare for this week this is my mind dump for the week a sermon for Wednesday and a sermon for Sunday those are the priorities priorities right you put those things first and I gotta um, uh, prepare a sermon for Thursday and a sermon for Friday because this week we have youth camp and I'm preaching at youth camp so those things also go on my list for today um, clean my closet um, clean my kitchen blah 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 whatever it is that you want to get done small things big things medium-sized things and put it on your list. I don't care if it's get your nails done. I got to color my hair. My grays are going crazy. So Tuesday, I'm coloring my hair. I got to find the time. I'm going to test drive a car sometime tomorrow. And that has to be scheduled. Don't leave anything out. Trust me. You must see it. Dump everything on there. Eat gelato. Whatever. Put it down. Put it down in your mind dump. that's the first step because once you have a look at that your brain automatically puts it into a doable category as long as it's in your brain it's overwhelmed let me show you how it works you ever have you ever um, known those kinds of people who keep all the apps open on their phone or all the the, the apps in the background of their computer are running so window upon window upon window upon window is open. They're not using all the apps. They're just using one app. But in the background, all the apps are running. Do you know what happens to the processor? It slows down. Do you know what happens to your phone? It'll start slowing down. All of a sudden, it's not working like it used to. The memory is being used up. And it's just not processing the information. Well, your brain is the same way. When things are open, when you have a million things I need to do, I need to do, I need to do, I need to do, I need to do eventually everything slows down the whole process is going to slow down and your brain won't be able to do the things more efficiently and most efficiently that it needs to do so what a brain dump does is gives you permission to take it out of your mind put it on the paper that way you can look at it got it all right the second thing once you've done the brain dump then i need you and i would advise you i don't need you to do anything but if you want to do this right go back through the week before Right? This is something I've found has been very successful for me because I am such an emotionally driven person sometimes that not getting a task done causes me some kind to feel a kind of way. It, you know, I feel a little bit upset or a little bit um, down 
because I meant to write a chapter in my book and I never got around to it. So it has a feeling of let down almost that's accompanying that. And it's kind of more difficult for me to forgive myself for it. So I go back through the week before and I, I chronicle, usually I'll write it in my phone during the day while I'm driving or whatever. Like for instance, I did not call my friend, right? So like if I'm supposed to call missionary Celia and I forget, I'm like, no. You know, so I write that down. I write the way I feel about it. That disappointed my, I disappointed myself in that, you know. And so when I review my week uh, at, on Saturday and I realized I went a whole week without talking to my mom more than twice or I didn't talk to my brother or, you know, and it's usually around people that I, I fail to communicate with. Um, I, I make that register and I, I take advantage of those feelings in terms of saying I'm never going to let that happen or I'm going to work hard to not allow myself to be put in that situation again and so those things I put it at the top of my list for the next week they they move up in priority because I realize that's a feeling I don't want to repeat so what did I do that I don't want to repeat what did I do that made me feel amazing and and you know when I worked out and I actually drank some of my eight greens which i love by the way and i still daily daily drink one of those uh and you know if i i felt better doing my workout when i drank that in the beginning that's something that i'm gonna do next week and yes i bring up that too you know drink this before you work out or whatever workout also by the way is on my list of things to do so that's the second thing Second thing, review what you did the week before, see what you're gonna repeat, and see what you're not gonna do again. Number three. Number three is, based on what I've written in my brain dump, I'm gonna set role-based goals. Now, role-based goals. I'm a wife, I'm a pastor, I'm a teacher, I'm a friend, I'm a daughter, I'm a million th things to a million people. But I have different goals based on all of the things that I am, you know, my roles. I'm an author, I'm a PG uh, podcaster, all of those things. So I, I ask myself, as a wife, what are the things that I must do? And then I write those things down. As a pastor, what are the most important things I need to do? And I write those things down. And those are things, and, and, that, that, and I don't mean that abstractly or in general, but this week, this week, what do I have to do for that role, for that relationship, for that accountability, for that task while I wear that hat. So, you know, um, for some of us that might mean it might be very job oriented or very family oriented and you want to schedule those things. You know, don't leave the important things up to, up to chance and maybe when we get time we'll sit down together and talk. I want to ask you something. Do you want to know what your priorities are? Ask yourself this question. What is more important to you than money? See those things that you just called out to me? If you didn't, the things that you thought about in your head, those are your priorities. Those are the things that are important to you. Most of you probably said family. Most of you said God. Most of you said your church, your, your relationships, your, your business, your, you know, all of those things. If they're more important than money, those are the things you want to schedule. You want to make sure that you put time in your week for those things if they are that important to you. So that's number three, set role-based goals. That number three will take you to those things, that, those priorities that we talked about, right? The most important things in your life. Those are non-negotiables. When you get your calendar, when you get your big piece of paper like this and your brain dump is done, you can sit with a calendar sheet, or you can draw it up like I did, one row for you. Most of you have planners and stuff like that. You see those priority things? Right now, first of all, put the time in. When, when are you going to schedule those things? When is that time with your spouse? When is that time to prepare your sermon? When is that? And then don't give yourself half an hour. Give yourself a block of time. Give yourself two to three hours for those most important things. Put them in your week twice, once, three times. How many ever times do you think is most 
significant and important. Put them first. Trust me. If cleaning your house is more important than money to you, put it first. Give it two hours. The easiest, and of course, the easiest way to clean your house is to clean a little bit every day. I know that, but in my life, I realize I need a big general. I need everything like spotless, and then I'll maintain it. So that's why I say put a block of time, not an hour of time, a block of time for the most important thing to you in your week. And I guarantee you, it will help you maximize your time, use your week, and to feel like that was a successful week for you. Do this consistently. You can't do it this Saturday and say, well, Pastor Sharo, it did not work. It's not gonna work every week, but you must do it consistently in order for it to become a habit, right? So now that my life is, you know, everybody's gone, my house is empty again, I can get back into that routine. I love a routine. I love a habit. Habits are what causes consistent change, but consistent progress in your life. It's not the thing that you do once. It's the things that you do consistently that will make the biggest difference in your life. So consistent prayer. If God is your priority, then schedule your prayer. Schedule your time with God. Schedule your study. Schedule your, your family time. Put it in your calendar. Make it non-negotiable. And please schedule church. Put church Sunday morning, whenever it is that you go, put it as a non-negotiable in your life and in your calendar. Because when you give God that time, the rest of the week, you get it's redeemed for you. I can't even tell you how. And let me show you a really simple way to look at it. You ever stayed home from church for nothing? Guilty. Like you just didn't feel like going. And you sit down to watch TV and before you know it, it's 9.30. And you're like, where did the night go? You did nothing. The time just went like that. But then you're sitting in church and you're like, whoa, it's taking forever. And it feels like the day lasted for and the two hours felt like 10 hours. Not because the preacher was boring necessarily. God just has a way of stretching you in his presence. And you get to enjoy every single second and it's like you know why it feels long sometimes because you just soak in the glory of god but when you stay home it's like time speeds by and not necessarily because you're having fun you know and and i tell you that to, to say do not neglect the assembling of yourselves together make church a priority make your relationship with jesus a priority make reading your bible and study a priority schedule it and then put their non-negotiables, your other non-negotiables in there. You know, time with your family, time to do the things that mean the most to you as it pertains to you as a, as a entrepreneur, you as a, a teacher, you as a wife, a mother, a student, whatever it is, the hat that you wear is schedule the block of time in your week and stick to it, stick to it. Sometimes it means you don't get to go out or you don't get to hang with your friends when you want to. It's gonna be, you know, mean that you disappear for two or three hours and, and you don't answer your phone, you know? And, and sometimes, especially like in my position, people feel like they need to know where you are 24 seven or, you know, you need to be reachable so that in case somebody dies or something, you know, they can call you. I get it, I get it. But really and truly, your spouse and if you have children, your children are probably the only ones that need to know where you are all the time. So I hope and I pray this is what I foresee happening. Once you begin to schedule your week, you end the week feeling like if you got the job done, that you did what God asked you to do in the time that you were allotted. And not only that, you pr progress in every one of your roles better. Your house stays cleaner. Your body is healthier because you'll eat better. You feel happier because you're less stressed. And most of all, you get your stuff done. I love you, Preacher Girls. If you have not yet registered for the Preacher Girl Online Summit, 
that's September 9th and 10th. You need to do so right now at PreacherGirlTV.com. And guess what? For the first time ever, we have a Preacher Girl in-person conference right here in New York City. And if you want to register for that, you can do so at PreacherGirlTV.com as well. Don't you ever forget, if God called you, no one can uncall you. Because you don't need a pulpit. You just need a message. Love you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, like, click the notification bell, do all the good things, share it, comment, and I'll see you again next week on Preacher Girl TV. Hold on. All right. Good meeting.